In this video, we're going to look at force variance and fatigue. Not really this type of fatigue, but muscle fatigue. So muscle fatigue is a muscle's decreased ability to contract after sustained exercise. So here we have a muscle that's exercising, lots of contractions, and this shows the battery sort of being depleted as we go. So that's muscle fatigue. The mechanism of muscle fatigue is not fully understood. Historically, it was attributed to lactic acid buildup, where they thought that the acid decreased the pH and that affected membrane permeabilities. Now they don't know for sure um, how that's involved, but it's looking less likely that that's the case. Electrolyte imbalance is also thought to play a role. Electrolytes being like sodium, potassium, and specifically calcium ion. And then decreased levels of ATP. Muscle fatigue is also related to muscle cramps. And you know what a muscle cramp is. That's where a muscle undergoes sustained involuntary contraction. So you might get this after you know, working out, or maybe sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night with your calf cramping and you have to sort of massage it out. That's a cramp. Force variance. It kind of sounds confusing, but it's, um, we'll just break it down by, by the words. Force, meaning like the force or tension or strength of a contraction. And then variance simply means that there's variability. So force variance is the force or tension exerted by a muscle, and then that force or tension can vary. And the reason why it varies, it depends on these factors. Fatigue, which we've already looked at. The frequency of stimulation of muscle fiber. That's called summation. And then the number of muscle fibers involved in the contraction. That's called the recruitment. And then also the length of the muscle fiber at the time of contraction. Now, length of muscle fiber, we'll look at that exclusively in the lab. But let's look at these other two right now, summation and recruitment. So we need to know a definition for muscle twitch. A muscle twitch is a muscle fiber's response to a single impulse. And remember that a muscle fiber is one muscle cell. So if we take one muscle cell and we apply a single impulse, we can observe a muscle twitch. So in this um, little physiology lab here, this isn't a, a single isolated muscle fiber. This is the muscle itself, but this is an example of a of a myogram, which is what we're going to look at here. So in this myogram, we have a, a single muscle twitch. So we have a single muscle fiber that's um, responding to a stimulation. So this is the time of stimulation right here, this green arrow, and time's going to proceed in this direction. And then we have the force or the strength or the tension of the contraction. So after the stimulation, we have this latent period. That's the time between the stimulation and before the muscle starts to contract. In humans, that's about two milliseconds. So that's two thousandths of a second. And then the muscle begins to contract. We have this period of contraction followed by a period of relaxation. Now let's look at um, three different myograms. Here's a series of twitches. So each green arrow is a stimulation. So the muscle fiber stimulated, we have period of contraction, followed by period of relaxation. Stimulation, period of contraction, period of relaxation. Stimulation, contraction, relax. So this um, proceeds and makes this pattern. But if we increase the frequency of the stimuli, look what happens. We have stimulation, we have the period of contraction, and then it begins to relax, but it doesn't fully relax, and we stimulate it again. So it contracts again, only relax partially, and it's stimulated again. So it seems as if these forces are summed together. That's what summation is. It's a response to high frequency stimuli where the muscle fiber can't fully relax. Now let's look at tetany or tetanus. This is where the frequency of stimulation is even higher. So in this case, um, look at this. The frequency of stimulation is so high that the muscle has no chance to relax. So this type of stimulation um, typically doesn't happen in the body. This would happen in isolation in a lab. Now, lastly, we have recruitment. Recruitment is an increase in the number of motor units that are activated. That is simply that more fibers are contracting. So when we say a motor unit, what we mean is a motor neuron 
and all of the muscle fibers it controls. So for example, here we have a bundle of muscle fibers. Here is one motor neuron. And if we look at this one, it looks like it's innervating only the purple muscle fibers. And here's a second motor neuron, and this one's innervating only the red muscle fibers. Now, how many fibers, how many muscle fibers are innervated by a neuron? That depends where we're at in the body. Um, you know, a, a muscle can have thousands of, of muscle fibers. And in, in, in a place like the eyeball, where precision control is especially important, a motor neuron might only innervate just a few muscle fibers. But in places like the quadricep, like the the strength muscles of the legs, um, you might have a motor neuron that innervates a thousand muscle fibers. So if one of these motor neurons is stimulated, all the fibers that it innervates will contract. For example, like if you're holding a cup, there's a certain amount of force required to hold that cup. So you might only stimulate some motor neurons, but then the grip required to hold that cup would be different than the grip required to say hang on to a rope in which case um, your body will recruit additional motor neurons and what you'll have is a stronger overall contraction not because any one fiber is contracting more or stronger but because you have simply more fibers contracting because you've recruited additional motor neurons so recruitment um, in this case will increase the strength of a muscle contraction. And again, we'll look at the length of a muscle fiber in the lab um, that, that follows.